Hi guys, it's Rick Shields down here at Quest Golf Academy here at Prairie Sports Village. I'm going to be testing and reviewing the Titleist DT Trusoft. This is the brand new DT Trusoft that's just come out. And I'm going to take it through its tests, not only out on the golf course to give you the feel and what I was seeing on the spin around the green, but also then bringing it back inside, getting on GC Quad, hitting some full shots, collecting some data, and then also doing a durability test, and then cutting this bad boy in half and seeing actually what's inside it as well. So as we know, tight list packed full of golf ball heritage. They've been bringing out fantastic golf balls for many, many years. And this is a new golf ball to their kind of armory. And it's what they're saying, it's one of the softest they've ever made, but it's also a distance ball. So it's not really competing too much with the Pro V1. It's sitting a little bit more underneath that category for your kind of middle handicapper who takes the game seriously, but also wants that feel, but also maybe want a little bit more distance. I could read all the book, box, but there's no point as we see it all the time. Soft, the, the softest compression tight list, longer distance, improved short game, blah, 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 blah. So what I did, I took it out on the golf course and I tested it, putting with the golf balls, chipping with it and pitching with it. My initial thought straight away, it doesn't feel that soft. It was a, it was a relatively firm feel. It was a nice feel, it wasn't clicky, it wasn't hard, but I wouldn't have said it was soft. Certainly not Pro V1 soft. This for me was, was kind of the middle range of a Titleist golf ball, that almost like a, a sole, a DT, to still make the solo golf balls, almost felt exactly like that. So it had a nice feel, firm feel, but wasn't really giving me the softness that I often crave for when I'm putting. Around chip shots, I actually felt it improved the feel a little bit. Actually, it was, it was a nice feel. It wasn't super soft again, but again, it was a nice feel. The spin was okay. Not blowing me away at the moment, and certainly not for me feeling that super, super soft. Then throwing some pitch shots in there as well. Again, I was getting some nice feel. Again, it was stopping pretty quick, but it wasn't getting any real zip back. It was just kind of stopping there on the spot. And again, good for control, but for, for the way I was striking it, not the response I expected to have from what they're saying is a super, super soft golf ball with loads of short game spin and everything else with it. So we get back inside and then we took it through the paces. On GC Quad, um, I hit five full wedge shots from 100 yards with a new tailor-made milled grind wedge. I then moved back to hitting some full 7-iron shots with a Ping I200 and then finished off with five driver shots with a Callaway Epic. Let's have a look at some numbers and then we should see a little bit more if there's much of a difference between this and some of the premium balls out there. So the 100 yard shot first, almost carrying on the nose for the three shots that I selected out of the five that I hit. The spin rate was in five digits, so it was just under 11,000. And that came as a surprise to me. I didn't think it would have that much spin. From all the feel I was getting on this golf course, for me it wasn't going to hit that number and it did really well. Spin rate was 10,984, and that is way beyond what I expected. For a super soft spinny golf ball, I typically see uh, spin rates edging into that 11,000, but some of the worst bad golf balls I've tested, or less spinny balls, they've not even been getting five figures. So it sits right in where it needs to sit. So pretty good, I was impressed with the 100 yard shots. We move back to the seven iron, it's getting 175 carry distance, which is bang on the number that I expect for the seven iron. Spin rate's just under that 6,000 mark. I mentioned before, typically when I'm hitting my seven iron, I like to see spin rates at 6,000 to 6,500. If I get up to seven, I'm over the moon. But this just sits a little bit underneath that category. So it wasn't spinning loads, but it felt good off a full seven iron shot. I couldn't complain at all. Um, and for a golfer who wants control, it will still stop. I just wouldn't see it getting too much actual spin back. But okay. Didn't blow me away, but it was okay. Mentioned other driver videos, I don't see too much, or ball testing videos, I don't see too much difference with the driver. 283 was my carry distance, bang on the number. Spin rate was just under 2000, actually pretty good. I was getting some good numbers off that. Ball speed was high, just under 159. That is high. For some of the balls I've tested so far, that's a really high driver ball speed number with low spin I was equaling some good distance. Was that the shot, the strike or was that the golf ball? It's a slightly harder one to determine on a full driver shot when I'm swinging at 111 miles per hour so to speak. So 
I then took it through its paces on a durability test. I hit 10 full golf shots with a, a brand new wedge into the screen. And I'll tell you what, it was probably by far the best durability golf ball I've ever tested yet. This has not got a single nick to it. It looks brand new. And I mean that. It is, it is almost untarnished. It's not come out with a scrap or a scrape. So that is a huge benefit for this golf ball. That The durability has blown every other golf ball that I've ever tested on my channel out of the water, which is pretty impressive. And again, if you don't lose that many golf balls and you're not too bothered about the softest spin, well, bang, you've got your golf ball. As long as you don't lose too many. For me, the feel wasn't quite where it needed it to be for the softness, considering this was it's called a true soft. It wasn't really giving me the true soft. It's giving me good distance. It's giving me good spin numbers. Not excellent, but good spin numbers. And it was giving me exceptional durability. Let's have a look at what's inside this uh, true soft, this DT true soft. So it's looking like a, well, we know it's a two-piece ball anyway, but we've got obviously the, the outer core, which I felt was quite hard when I was testing it. And we've got this True Flex cover as well. Oh, that's the True Flex cover, sorry, True Touch core. And this is a new low compression core and it's larger. And that's supposed to generate lower spin and longer drives. It's quite an interesting color scheme in the, in the middle of that though. So guys, that is the review done. Tight list, DT True Soft. I feel like there's a definite market for this. This is absolutely your weekend golfer who just wants the golf ball that's gonna perform. It's not gonna be amazing, that's gonna last durability-wise, and it's not gonna break the bank. It fits right in that category. It's perfect for that. It's not super soft. I think there's more soft golf balls out there, but if you don't wanna pay exceptional prices that go through the roof, and you still want a tightless golf ball, this could be where you look. What do you think? Tell me what you think down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is it about feel for you? Is it about distance? Is durability a factor? I would love to hear your thoughts. I, I feel like it is, and that's why I've included it in this test. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. You can do that by hitting the red button. Comment below, tell me what you think, and check out loads more videos. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. And that was the Titleist DT TrueSoft Golf Ball.